Here we are for Van TV. We're here in United Park after Jolly United beating Colt Ramblers 4 2. Uh, I'm here with winger Mark Doyle after you scored your two goals and obviously come back from injury. You've had your first star and hit the ground running. So, how are you feeling about it? Yeah, great. I'm um, delighted to score. I wish I got a hat trick. Hit the header off. The a few occasions, yeah, almost, almost. I know, there, yeah. yeah. And then the one that I blew over as well. But <laughs> yeah, it's great to get back and uh, get a start. I came on last week and. Um, yeah, I didn't know if I had 90 in me, but yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, good win. Great to be back. I knew um, it was funny. Cause I was saying, I was saying to uh, saying to my friend during the game, I said, "You know that uh, Mark is back playing, like because he meant the diagonals that playing from the right hand side over." I meant the overlaps. I said, "Yeah, yeah, Mark, Mark was definitely the back playing." But um, it was kind of weird the game, like the first half. Um, although you seemed like you were very comfortable in control, he scored three goals. Covet and Owe were getting these goals back at an hour. Was there something said at half time in terms of how it was happening? Uh, in terms of did you change anything tactically or anything at all? We didn't really change anything, but they were sloppy goals to give away, so we just kind of said we'd have to manage the game, yeah, tighten yeah. it up at the back, and we knew if we got another one, then that would be it. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously, Chris done great to win the penalty, and uh, Sean he's never in doubt really from there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it, the, the second half, like, because the first one because of the goals we conceded, but the second half seemed very professional in terms of you seem to be much more tired, much more compact, um, and then obviously he's got the goal at the end. Like, but um, what was what was Tim saying to you at halftime? Well, just basically that we have to manage it. Um try and get another goal like we weren't going to sit yeah, off yeah. but we we're going to tighten it up as yeah. well because we conceded sloppy goals that we could have avoided mm-hmm. um, and we knew if we got another goal that we could go on maybe get a couple of more came late enough but um, yeah. yeah it was all right we could we could see it out then yeah um how did you feel anyway obviously uh, from your injury have you were you still training in that time or anything along those lines and how did you feel today yeah i felt all right i was doing i'm back doing full training about two weeks now and um, but before that i was just doing uh running with dave physio um just to get just kind of keep fit while mm. i wasn't playing but it's it's different being match fit yeah, yeah. rather than just being fit yeah. because you can go as many runs as you want but it's different really when you're out there but um yeah, yeah look it's I felt fit enough and uh, yeah. finished the 90 so, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, now it stands like obviously if Shell's won today um, the top of the league and you are just behind them I think it's about 5 points and, and Longford lost today so um, it's kind of now it looks like user if you can continue your form now, it looks like it could be you or Shell's for top place I know some people would say that Shell's might go on to win it but do you think that you, do you feel like you just have it in you to, to maybe win the league well I think Shells are rightly so expected to win it with mm. the with the budget they have there, the money they put in. Um, I think it'd be look. We want to press them all the way, but uh, all we can do is focus on ourselves. Really, we have to win all yeah. our games yeah. um, and solidify a playoff place first and foremost, and then we can see from there. Yeah, I will. Uh, I'll let you celebrate your win anyway, Mark. But really appreciate your time. All right. Cheers. Thanks very much. Thanks. A game of very two very different halves, Tim. Um, so Tim, give us your thoughts on uh, the game itself. Listen, first off, um, delighted to get the win. Mm. That's the, the main thing, I suppose, any t- any stage of the season, but especially uh, <coughs> um, this late on the season where we want to try and finish as high as possible in the league and listen, all that matters is the results. Um, first half, I felt, got a goal ahead. <coughs> now, similar to the game down there, um, they scored a minute or two later and we were weary of that and we said it to the lads and listen, it was a poor goal to concede. Um, and then we go and get second goal we got 3-1 up and then again give a soft free kick away and in fairness it's a great delivery and it's a good header by uh, the boy Leonard so um, we've gone in at half time 3-2 up I've, listen we felt comfortable enough but we knew it was still a, a dangerous scoreline so second half we really wanted to try and put the foot down and mm. try and get the fourth goal listen it didn't come till late on but um, yeah listen we got the goal in the end we, we, I think we hit the post with Dyler and Chrissy was nearly on the end of a few things and Stephen Meany had a couple of chances so Ah, we had we'd good chances in the second half, but listen, I can't fault the lads, they were ab- absolutely excellent again. Mm-hmm. It, it's mad the first half, obviously for a neutral it was great to watch, like, but it seemed like every time he was attacked, you, you looked like you could probably score, like, and I, th- I was thinking it could have been you know, four or five, and and it's funny because then it was almost like a Sunday league game where any time Cove got, got a bit of a chance, the goals came out of nothing now, like, but they seemed like they could have scored. It's great for a neutral, but you must have been like really putting your hair, pulling your hair out at half-time, were you? Yeah, listen, no, not really. We were like we were happy with how the game was going. Um, yeah. Just a couple of goals were, were avoidable. 
and we can see that I don't think Lucas made a save in the whole game though to be honest mm. um, he's caught a few crosses in the second half there um, athletically Lucas is very good so um, he relieves the pressure on the on the, on the back four um, yeah listen it's it's certainly uh, scoreline 4-2 probably might be a little bit harsh than the performance that we had there tonight we, we should have had a couple more goals but again um, the keepers made a couple of saves there as well and mm-hmm. Listen, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. It's, it's irrelevant what the performance is like once we, once we get the win, and that's the main thing. Mm-hmm. It's crazy, I think, uh, the made the games Mark's being out, Mark Doyle, and uh, he was back today, and I was, <laughs> I was saying to him earlier on, I said, you know that you're back playing because he made the diagonals that are going out him the whole time, you know? But um, for such a performance, for the time that he's been out, and he's now already, like, second highest scorer in the league, like, I mean, he's a left midfielder. Um, how big was it to have him back in the team today? Ah, he's brilliant. Um, listen, we missed him for a month or so. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, with his broken hand. Um, listen, he's got a le- what, ten goals. I think it's from left wing. Yeah. Um, yeah high scores twelve apparently. But yeah, he's ten yeah, goals yeah. and they're all from play as well. So um, yeah. I think Doyle got nine last season from left wing. Yeah. He goes on. He goes on noticed. He's he's a, a very unassuming young fella. He's unbelievable for us. His work rate, everything he does, decision making for such a young lad. Mm. Um, listen, he's phenomenal. He's really, really missed um, mm. when his time when he was out injured. James Clark, I mean, he's a different type of player. So we sort of probably lost that little threat in behind um, from that area of the pitch. And uh, Chrissy Lyons has been fantastic for us. But <coughs> when he has Doyler there with him, Doyler gives him the yeah. option to go in behind. And um, yeah, listen, it's great to have him back. And another two goals from tonight. And um, he certainly likes playing against Cove anyway. Mm-hmm. So uh, you almost feel I almost feel bad <laughs> for for Chrissy sometimes because Chrissy's probably been throughout his best player almost probably probably I'd say for the season, even though he's not the highest scorer and he's the only striker up front. Like he, it goes to show if people regarding him as probably the best player in the team because of how he's playing, it shows the work rate that he has and the things that he's creating elsewhere for the team. Like yeah, I've said that from day one when Chrissy came here, I played with him at uh, Sligo and Bray and um, listen. Strikers get judged on goals, but there's so much more to Chris's game than goals. Um, I said to him last year, there's no pressure on you to score because what he brings to the team and the way he holds the play up and he occupies centre half and it gives lads runners from midfield and, and elsewhere. Um, it gives them space and time, and he brings people into play and he takes so many knocks for us as well. But listen again, I think he's got seven or eight goals this season. Um, I think they're off in play bar, maybe one penalty, maybe I think. Um, so listen, again, it's a good return from him. Um, he'll get a couple of more before the end of the season. And again, I think if you probably ask any centre half in the league, they probably dread playing against him more than anyone <laughs> yeah, else. And yeah. we're delighted to have him here. And he works his socks off. Well, that's what all the players do. Um, they work for each other, and that's the, the main asset that we have. Mm-hmm. Well, things are looking nicely for you now after Longford lost tonight, and um, Shells have obviously won. But uh, it looks like you are hot on Shells tails at the top. Like so, interesting to see how the rest of the season goes. Um, so yeah, well, there's only there's eight games left. Um, yeah, yeah. Listen, I'd say they'd imagine they'll strengthen in the window again. Um, it's it'd crazy be, it'd be difficult. Yeah, games, well, it's it'll be difficult to it'll be difficult to um, outpoint Shells by five points now at this stage. Uh, they've got a better goal difference, difference than us as well. Mm-hmm. I know we scored mm-hmm. more, but um, they don't concede too many. And I know it's another clean sheet from there tonight, so they've got plenty of experience. And listen, we're not, as I said previously, we're not looking. At the gap above us, we're looking at down to fifth place, and uh, we know it's only still six points. It's a big game for us next week against Longford. Um, a win for us would certainly put oh, us yeah, in a strong yeah. position. But again, probably a game you probably should have won at home here as well. Well, listen, yeah. we've, we've been competitive yeah. in all the games uh, this season, yeah. bar second half down in Longford and the second half here against Cabin Teeley. Yeah. So, um, yeah, listen, it's a game next week that if they win, they're right back above us, and they're right back in it. If we win, it puts us in a strong position. So, listen, it is what it is. Uh, the, the, the games are coming fairly quickly now at this stage of the season and mm. with only eight games left we sort of have to try and maximise uh, the results and a win next week is what we're aiming for and if we can get that it'll be unbelievable yeah alright well Tim I'll let you celebrate the win on your own but thanks very much for your no, time alright thank you thanks, thanks. All right.